about immunity and diet. And I think this is such a topical and important subject right now. And I think in terms of, you know, fighting COVID-19, there's been much said about how the, your diet can impact on your immunity. But I think what I want to sort of say to people is that, you know, your diet alone is not is, is alone will not help you. I think we need to, you know, ensure that we do our diet as well as other things as well. Well, I'm, I'm not, I'm not the expert, and I'm not going to try and be the expert. So I really want um, Dr. Alice you to listen really intently to some of the useful information that um, will be shared with us this evening. And that's, so I'm going to, without any further ado, as always, I'll hand over to Alice. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Karen. Um, today we're going to be talking about the immunity. So, I mean, with, with a lot of reading and uh, science, I'm sure all of you know that the way you eat affects the way you respond to disease. There have been studies and studies and studies that have been done over the years, but the answer is the same. So if you don't eat healthy, it will affect how you respond to disease. If you, get, if you don't eat healthy and you get a flu, it takes you longer to heal. If you don't eat healthy and you're you have any of the chronic conditions, it becomes very difficult to manage. You spend more money on medication and um, things like that. So we hope that this session is going to um, help all of us to, it's a reminder so that we can all do better and uh, improve our nutrition status. So I'm here courtesy of Sahara Nutrition and I'm happy to work with Kanto and Power our community so that we can all be healthy. You must agree that we all can't afford so much money to buy food, to pay rent, and then my, most of it to pay on our medical bills. So I tell you, and I promise you, if you eat healthy, you always improve your immune system. And your diet has an impact on how much money you actually spend on, your, on, on treating disease. So I like this saying, it's by Heitha Morgan, and it says, every time you eat and drink, you're either feeding disease or you're fighting it. So which one do you do? Do you feed disease or are you fighting disease? So what is the immune system? People talk about the immune system, immune system. But let's see, the immune system is your body's network of organs, tissues, and cells that work hand in hand to, pro you know, to keep you healthy by protecting bacteria, viruses, parasites, and fungi. So this is a whole army, it's a whole network. It doesn't work alone. The organs and the tissues and the cells work together. Then in, as a team, they protect you from bacteria, viruses, parasites, and fungi. So of course, for it to be able to be um, uh, uh, healthy, diet, plays a big role, your environmental plays a big role and lifestyle factors. So it is definitely affected by your dietary intake. How much you eat, what time you eat, the type of food you eat, is it natural, is it processed, is it refined? And your environment, where, where do you live? Is it a clean environment? Is there a lot of pollution coming from maybe industrial waste? or any other type of pollution, like there's a lot of sun, there's a lot of pollen, because we know that some people actually are very reactive, they have uh, allergies. And of course, your lifestyle factors, like sleeping and your physical activity, and generally your emotional state. So all this in your emotional state, your mental state, physical activity, your sleeping habits, environmental and diet can compromise your immune system. So what does it mean to have a compromised immune system? A compromised immune system means that you're going to frequently be ill. And if you're always getting upper respiratory tract infections, all the time you have a flu, every time you have a cold, you treat a cold, you stay a month, you get it. That's a sign that you have a low immune system or a compromised immune system in this case. Also, when you have a compromised immune system, you will stay longer in hospital. You'll find that somebody has a flu and they will be hospitalized for their flu. Or if they're not hospitalized, they will be sick longer. So your off days from work are five days, two weeks, 
instead of just a few days. And you can compare with your friends and people who live around you. You find that somebody else will have a flu, but two days later, they're good to go. So what is your immune system compromised? Do you think it is compromised? What do you think? Also, when you have a compromised immune system, your medication use is high. So for every small illness, you need medication. You have a headache, it is compounded. You have a flu, it is compounded. You have an infection, typhoid, some kind of infection. It is completely compounded and it is, it is, it is, it is, it is abnormal. So when your medication use is long, hospital stay is longer, and your visits, frequent visits to the maybe the GP is, is often, so you spend more money. And of course, in short, if your immune system is compromised, then you suffer more whenever illness strikes you. Of course, when you have other conditions like underlying conditions like diabetes, high blood pressure, heart disease, cancer, your, your immune system can even be compromised to, you know, level, you know, so we talk of levels of, of compromise, of compromise, level one, level two, level three, you know. So where are you at? Are you level one low immune? Are you level two low immune? Are you level three low immune? So um, let's carry on. So today I'm teaching you a little bit about of the immune. So the next thing is, what are the parts of the immune system? It's good for us to know so that we can make informed decision. So your immune system has three parts, or maybe four, five. I'll mention the three most common. We have the mucous membranes, we have the T cells and B cells. I'll explain simply just now. And we have the bone marrow. And then, of course, we have um, other, other, other things, that other organs that also help to control your immune system, like the lymphatic system. So what is the mucous membrane? The mucous membrane is, uh, is found in your nose, in your eyes, and in your mouth. So this, they work together with the white blood cells to fight infections before they get inside you. So the mucous membrane protects you from getting disease. And that's why it's very important to keep your hands clean because where do your hands go? In your mouth, sometimes even in your nose or in your eyes. So your immune system starts here from your nose, your, your, your eyes, and your mouth. And in these places, we have white cells that fight infections before they get inside your system. Then we have the T cells and the beta cells. The, B, the T cells and the, beta, and the B cells, they, increase, they create the antibodies that fight off invaders and this, they destroy infected cells throughout your body. Then we have the bone marrow. The bone marrow and the spleen, what they do actually is to they make the white blood cells that now, <coughs> excuse me, they make the white blood cells that your, your mucous membrane uses. And then your lymphatic system transports the lymph, a fluid containing white blood cells throughout your body. So it helps in the transportation so that it's going around, getting these cells and killing them. So in other words, if we really care for our body, if we eat healthy, we care for our environment, we sleep well, we exercise, then the most efficient pharmacy is within your own system. Because remember the body is producing all these cells, the body is working as a network to help you with your, your, your immune system. So assuming that all of us uh, eat healthy, because I think we've been learning a lot. So what do you think are some of the things we need to do to improve our immune system in terms of your diet and nutrition? I'll ask, put this question to the floor and ask a few people to please comment. What, what do we need to do? Uh-huh. Please help me out. I would say um, to, um, I think well, something that you said last week about preservative free. So mm -hmm. where possible, eat um, food that is free from preservatives. So it's as natural as possible so that we're getting the best quality food. Mm -hmm. Very good. 
That's so true. Because remember, we said some of those um, uh, preservatives actually interfere with your immune system. They make you more sensitive. They make you more reactive even to medicine. So very good. Thank you, Karen. Hibo? I was going to help you by calling some of the people I identify in the mm -hmm. list. Mm -hmm. Martina. Is Martina on? Hello, Martina. I'm sure you know. In fact, what we what we what we know and what has been published is every every client who walks to my office seeking nutrition advice already know 80%. They just want to confirm. So why don't you take this one minute to confirm what you know about the immunity? What practices should we involve in to, to improve our immunity? Can I just add again, um, I think, again, a varied diet. So the, mm. um, the statement that you made right at the beginning was mm. fighting disease or feeding disease. Mm. What mm. We eat. So be mindful about what we eat and how it's, it could potentially impact on our health. Mm. Well done. So, yeah, so I th I'm glad that you remember that quote. Like, are you feeding? When you ate your breakfast this morning, when you ate your lunch, when you had your snack, you haven't had your dinner, you're going to eat it soon. Is it going to feed the disease or is it going to fight the disease? That should be something that you remember always. In fact, I was telling Heba that I should make some fridge magnets of that saying and distribute. Uh -huh. eh? Karen, maybe that's the gift that we should give everybody next time, hopefully. But I'm just going to make it easier and then we're just going to go to what we call the G-bombs. The G-bombs are just the different, uh, the different um, foods that you need to eat to help your immune system. Already remember, this is just, I'm just mentioning some things that you must include in your diet, and you already all know this. But remember, we have been talking about many things. You need to eat less food at night so that your body can, so that you can sleep and have quality sleep. During sleep, the body rejuvenates itself. It rejuvenates the immune system, for example. You know, it removes toxic waste. The white cells circulate freely and remove, destroy all the bac harmful bacteria, parasites, and, you know, the viruses. So apart from just those, then I'm going to add diet. So you need to sleep well. You need to exercise regularly. Even if you're only getting the, tw the 30 minutes that Orlando gives us every Tuesday, if that's the only exercise you're able to get in a week, well done. That's a good start. And it will do something to your immune system. Of course, the kind of house you live in, is it clean, you know, or does it have clutter? Because you know also that if there's so much clutter, there's a lot of books, they collect dust, they collect uh, microorganisms, and this can also affect your immune system. So anyway, let's talk about the G-bombs. The G-bombs just stand for greens, beans, and many, other, and many other different types of food that you're going to find out now. So the G stands for the greens, the green vegetables. Eat a variety of green vegetables. Green vegetables, they have your phytonutrients, which helps to build your immune system. So some of them you can eat raw, but all your green vegetables, you should eat them lightly cooked. All your green vegetables have your fat-soluble vitamins, very high in your fat-soluble vitamin, vitamin A, vitamin E, vitamin K, vitamin D. So you need to add oil. So do not, you can steam the vegetables, but make sure you put some oil. Because for you to absorb the fat-soluble vitamin, it means that there must be oil for your body to be able to absorb it. So... You have a variety of green vegetables. What I say, always make sure you have you eat color. Look at the color of the food on your plate. If it's green, that's good. Then the B stands for the beans. So we have the beans. They have um, they have a certain compounds, and these compounds they enhance your gut microbiome which is important because your immunity begins with the health of your digestive system. So a lot of people don't eat beans because they say that, oh, it gives you gas. But what you need to do is always, you can soak the beans overnight and then drain the water and then cook the beans. You will not have gas. 
The other thing is um, you can actually um, uh, take a carrot, peel a carrot, put it with the beans when you're cooking it. When the, when the beans is cooked, remove the carrot. Unfortunately, you might have to throw this carrot because if you eat it, you will suffer the consequences. And some of these things I learned from my clients. This one was told to me by an old lady and it was really magic. So you can eat beans, always eat them also when they're in season, when they're fresh and not dried. But the, variety, the more beans you eat, the better for you. So please improve on your beans. In fact, remember also when we eat a lot of starches in our diet, a lot of bread, a lot of rice, that's also a lot of sugar that we are consuming. Remember we were talking about like a slice of bread will just give you three teaspoons of sugar or four. So if you eat like four slices of bread, that's already 16 teaspoons of sugar. So beans also are very good carbohydrates. So you can sometimes replace your rice with beans, your bread with beans, your potatoes with beans, and so you're getting a lot more of these compounds that will enhance your um, digestive health. And onions, 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 onions. Onions are very, very important for your immune fighting. Immune, they are very high in your immune fighting bacteria and as well, as well as prebiotics. So onions are really good. In fact, um, onions can also absorb uh, uh, bacteria. So that means that if you keep, you should not cut the onion and leave it there and then use it the next day because it, it absorbs bacteria. In fact, in an old medicine, if somebody has a cold and flu, they actually hand an onion in the room and it absorbs the bacteria around there. So you should never cut the onion and leave it halfway. You should use all of it. But Including onion in your diet is very important. What I notice is that a lot of people cut the onion and cook it until it browns. Now, when you cook it until it browns, you have lost all the, um, all the, all the, the, the you've lost all the good things about onions. So always just lightly cook your onions and add it to your food, or just make an onion soup. Don't cook it until it's black or brown, unless it's just for that recipe and you're not looking to get any nutrients. But remember, when you eat, are you feeding the disease or are you fighting it? Then we have mushrooms. They have an immune balancing compound. These are called IgA stands for immunoglobulins. There are many types, but they've been, they've been found that this one, the white onions, and we have different onions, some are poisonous, but the onions have this um, immunoglobin, which, which is very good for your immune system. So include, include it. And then we have berries, blueberries, they are called tesobiline. Tesobiline, I don't even want to pronounce that word, but this compound helps with inflammation, it lowers inflammation and it helps to fight disease. Remember the minute you get a bacteria, it causes inflammation and the body goes into, into serious problem, producing antibodies here, inflammatory um, uh, compounds are produced and it goes haywire. But uh, berries are actually anti-inflammatory. So they help to lower inflammation by disease. That means you, if you're sick, you recover quickly. So these are good also to include in your diet. And then we have your seeds. We have your different seeds. We have your chia seeds. We have the all types of seeds, even your pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds, name it. So make a habit of, in, of adding seeds and keeping seeds. You can add them in your food. You can add them in your salads. You can add them with your cereal in your fruit and eat it because these are very high in nutrients. And remember the foods that I've that included is not only high um, in particular nutrients, but they also have your micronutrients. You know, they have specific phytochemicals. But they also have your micronutrients, you know, your vitamins and your minerals that you need for disease. So basically, these are things that if you don't include in your diet, make a point of including them every week in your diet. But just to show you um, something here. So this is the a poor nutrition circle, which uh, it means that if you, it's called the vicious circle of malnutrition. It means that if you're already in poor nutrition state, you don't eat healthy and you get any condition, you get sick, you get COVID, for example. It means that within a very short time, you, you, because you're already in poor nutrition state, 
your micro and macronutrient deficiency, it will be depleted very quickly. And so within a short time, you're deficient in micronutrients. And then within a few days, your disease continues, your immune system is worsened. And then you have more opportunistic infections and you have increased frequency and the duration of these infections. And when you don't eat, your nutritional needs increase. Let me use a number. If you're sick, you always need to eat more food than when you're well. So you're sick today. Let's say you need 2,000 calories for you. Let's say the person is the same size as Karen. They need 2,000 calories, but they're in poor nutritional state. So because you're in poor nutritional state, your appetite is also going to be very low. You're not able to eat. Every day when you don't eat, your requirement can increase by 500, 500, 500. So three days, your requirement is up from 2,000 calories to 3,500, but you're not eating. That means the body starts to deplete the nutrients even further. So to be honest, most people in, who are hospitalized actually die of malnutrition. It's never the cancer or it's never the HIV or the diabetes. It's usually malnutrition and dehydration. That is the highest prevalence and most, uh, the highest um, uh, cause for mortality in hospitalized people. So let's not get there. Let's not get there. Let's not get to this state where when you're sick one day, within three days, you're hospitalized, your weight has dropped, and you're even more sick. No, you can prevent that. You can prevent that. So what do we need to do? What do we have to take home? I want you to remember this six words. Are there six? Yeah, we've talked about them before. But what is, you need to be free of toxins. So identify the toxins that you consume. A lot of sugar lowers your immune system. Processed, eating a lot of processed food because of the preservatives, it also lowers your immune system. So we want to reduce, identify the toxins that we eat, in other words, the bad habit, and remove it. Then rehydration. Take water. An adult should take between 1.5 to 2 liters every day. If they are in an office seated with a lot of lighting during the day, they need to take more water. Eat healthy and always eat what's natural. Nature is your best medicine. Eat your breakfast, lunch, dinner. Always have a variety of food. Keep a diary and, and evaluate your diary. Exercise, exercise, exercise. Walking, running, jogging, exercise like Orlando is doing. Those are all good, but do something. Remember, if you can't make time for exercise, be ready to make time for illness. Exercise alone is equivalent to I, like 15% or 20% increase on your, on your immune system. So every time you go on a 15, 20 minute, 30 minute walk or jog, it, it improves your immune, sy immune system significantly and also helps the excretion of toxic waste from your system. And have enough rest. At the end of the day, you must just make sure you get enough sleep because nighttime is for sleeping, it's not for anything else. And last but not least, Manage stress. If we have emotional stress, physical stress, it always affects your immune system because the body will always produce chemicals to, to, to be able to solve the problem. If you're having mental issues, it will produce certain um, chemicals or compounds. If you're feeling emotionally distressed, it will produce. So you need to manage stress. So in other words, this is the take home. Every act of kindness on your part is boost your own immune system. That will be an act of kindness to yourself. Thank you very much. Wow, thank you so much, Alice. And I think, you know, your part, your, you know, as you say, the take home, every act of tact, every act of kindness is a boost to your immune system. And it's as simple as that, isn't it? It's about being nice to yourself. And, mm -hmm. you know, I think, you know, we, we take it for granted, don't we? That just because we're eating, we're doing all right. But mm -hmm. actually what we're eating plays such a significant part in our overall health. So thank you again. I just want to know, are there any questions that anybody would like to have answered at this point? Please um, unmute and ask the question or pop it in the 
uh, the chat box for us. Mm -hmm. um, hello. Hello. Uh, yes, I did miss a part of which she was talking about the beans and she did mention us soaking it. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just wondering with soaking it, um, the water from the soaked beans, do we use it? Because I'm thinking that couldn't the nutrients go in the water? I missed a bit of it because of the network. If she could kindly explain, I'll be very grateful. Thank you. Okay. So what was your name? Ramat. Ramat, thank you very much for your question, Ramat. Alice, I'll leave that to you. Okay, thank you. No problem. So Ramat, so when you, you see when the beans are dried, um, you won't lose really much of the nutrients because the compound is inside the grain and not outside the grain. So when it's soak it, it doesn't lose much. And uh, because a lot of people don't eat beans because of the gas that it produces. So then soaking overnight and draining the water, you don't lose too many nutrients from it. When you do that to when the beans is, is fresh, then you do lose a lot of nutrients. But you see fresh beans when they are raw, then you don't need to soak, it doesn't give you gas. The other alternative is to also cook it with a carrot. You peel a carrot and you cook it with it when you're cooking it. And so you have to, unfortunately you have to throw the carrot because it absorbs the gas. And so that's another alternative. So if you are, yes, you might lose some nutrients, but if you don't want to lose any, then just cook it with a carrot and then throw the carrot. Yeah, and it works, it works, yeah. Wow, thank you. Thank you, that's you're, you're welcome. About using the, um, the carrot as mm. a means of absorbing um, mm. sort of the, the, the gases from, from the, the beans. When mm. you were talking about onions, I wrote in the chat box to Hibber, um, mm. I remember somebody saying to me to cut an onion in half and put it on the bottom of my feet as a way of getting rid of toxins. And it, it was mm. quite interesting that you said it, it takes, it picks up um, so I think it's an old wives, I, I don't know, and mm. I've not tried it um, as a way of, um, it's an old wives tale, as they say, of a way of uh, taking toxins out of somebody's body. Yeah, the, that one for putting on the feet, I don't know, but yeah. I've had people say a lot of things, uh, they buy certain glass and put it in the feet and it turns black and they saw so it's removing toxins. Your body excretes toxins through your kidney and your liver. And it comes out of the body through sweat, through your, you know, your, you know, long call, your feces, and water and urine. That's how the body excretes waste. So I don't know if you put an onion, it can do no. No research has shown that anyway. Because the body has been made very well, that you just need to take do your part and the body will do its part. Believe me, you don't need you don't need to bring something to help you excrete waste. Your body already excretes it. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank you for saying that. Um, mm. Are there any more questions? A burning one. <laughs> when you mentioned oil, um, adding a fat to the vegetables, mm. what would you suggest as a, a healthy oil to add to the vegetables? Okay, so um, I have uh, my PhD was about fats and fatty acids. <laughs> So I did a lot of reading. And one of, the, one of the things that we all discover is when you do a lot of reading, you find that nature is still the best medicine. So for a long time, we've been told that saturated fat is bad for you, you know, and uh, it will kill you, it will increase your cholesterol. But if you read even the current studies now, it shows that your carbohydrate is the enemy. That is the one that's going to increase. So in other words, the best fat for you is your natural fat. I remember growing up, my mom used to make meat and she'd buy the fatty meat. I mean, we didn't have a problem. And then she will, when, she, when the meat is cooked and she wants to serve it, she'll just throw in the green vegetables. And so she doesn't need to add oil. So the problem is always the process and refined things. So just eat your natural fat. Your coconut oil is fine. Your, meat, your fat from the meat is natural, it's fine. Your chicken skin is fine. Most of your animal proteins, you don't need to fry them, but um, your vegetables, you need to add oil. So things like coconut or I mean, coconut oil, those are your natural oils, you can use them. Avocado is a natural oil, you can add avocados to your vegetables. So just natural. So your question is going to be, 
how much natural am I eating? And remember, natural is going to fight the disease. It won't feed it. 